today evening, Brandon. No, don't don't do it, Brandon. No, don't do it. <laughs> Everyone's favorite pitch practice. The show. show. <laughs> We're here. Had to do a quick costume change. <laughs> oh, Brandon. You know what? I should go get my uh, hat just like that, and then we'll be absolute twins be right twins. now. We'll be twinning. Right. This is this is twinning. crazy. This is not something we didn't even plan this. Uh, yeah, there was no there was no prior uh, communication that we were going to wear these shirts. It's probably because we're sporting today. We're sporting our free t shirts. Free, yeah. absolutely free, it. right? If it's free as for me, yeah, they're free. They're yes. Sent as, they're sent as a gift. If you do this one thing and sign up for this one thing, that's free. Exactly. Free. And yeah. uh <laughs> and I and I and uh I, what's up everybody out there listening? Say hi. Give us a hashtag where you're watching from. We want to know where you're watching from out there. So comment down below where you're watching from. And I want to give some shout outs to some people that have been some of our engaging uh, uh, watchers out there. So if you if you show us, you might get shout out on, right here on the show. And uh, let me just throw these names out there real quick as we get into our uh, our book club today. Um, John Serge Gagnon. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name there. Uh, what's up? Thanks for watching. Always commenting with your uh, favorite parts of our show, Yatsik. Hey, what's up, Yatsik? What's up? Great to see you. Miss Tracy Kelly from Expedition Soaps and her IEP programs. Appreciate you. Shenna Shins. What's up, Shins? I want to throw those shots out there. There's some more people, too. Some surprise. Blanca Quinones, Tyrone Banks, Maria Martinez, Russell Rencher. You got anybody to shout out there today, Brandon? No, I don't. I'm going to shout myself out. I'm terrible at this stuff, man. I don't, I don't go back and look at all the comments. I got too many axes to grind and things like that. But I appreciate everybody that watches, likes, posts, comments, and shares um, this video. Your your support is loved. So please keep doing that. It just, uh, it, it, it helps us to be able to help you. Yes, yes, yes. We're so great. Uh, we're, we're putting in, we're putting the end to our book, uh, to the book that we're in today. 10X is easier than 2X, but I want to, I uh, want to make sure to share with you all how you can get your very own free funnel hacker t-shirt just like these and these are these are absolutely free brandon this is it, we, we didn't even pay for you don't even pay for shipping nope you don't even pay for shipping and i'm going to show you the secret place where you can go and you can have it in probably less than a week what a coincidence right <laughs> when did you get, when did you get yours uh, I don't know, about a month ago when I, when I signed up. Oh, about a month ago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you get this absolutely free and I've put together a quick little presentation. So I'm glad you're watching. Let me share my screen here real quick. Let me get a, uh, all right, check this out. Hey, you see that? Nope. Can you see that now? Nope. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. There now, you now, there, now you see it, right? There you go. All right, now you see it. So this is a very special page that uh, I will show you how to uh, get access to it. And as you can see here, it says, welcome to, what does that say? The ClickFunnels family. That's it. Welcome to the yeah, ClickFunnels yeah. family. And what else does it say there, Brandon? Looks like you can get a free t-shirt. What does it say? What does it say? Watch this. Oh, I can't see it, man. I, I made my screen too small. Watch videos, and then you'll get a free t-shirt. That's all you got to do. It's real simple, folks. Take 10 minutes of your time. 
watch the videos, sign up for the challenge, and you get a free t-shirt. And it looks like there's a thousand plus designs. I did not get a chance to pick my yeah. t-shirt. They just, they just sent me this one. Yeah, you simply, what you do is you go to this page that'll be linked down below in the comments. You sign up for the challenge. And on the day one, you'll find access to this area right here where it says, watch this short onboarding video. It's probably about, what's that there? 15 to 20 minutes. You watch this short onboarding video and you'll get a free Funnel Hacker t-shirt. Um access to the entire library of funnel and design templates so the thousand designs are the templates brandon oh there you go yeah, yeah didn't you because you got access to the uh the funnels and templates inside of click funnels 2.0 and what you'll do is you'll click that little button right down there that says give me my t-shirt funnels and training right now once you click that button here is where you you simply enter in your best email address and it, on the next step you'll choose your t-shirt size and then decide where to ship it to and this is what that page looks like you simply fill out the information let them know your size where to send it and then immediately you'll receive your product order and as you can see here absolutely free zero 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 what do they call that free free 99 it's free 99 <laughs> it's free is for me free 99 you can check the link down in the comments to get your free funnel hacker t-shirt and then what we want you to do is just show it show it to us let us see you sporting your funnel hacker gear Everybody's got to have a little bit of funnel hacker gear in their life, right? Mm -hmm. Why not? Why not? Why not? Cool, cool. So, hey, what's been going on, Brandon? Lots been going on last week, since last week, and we have reached the final chapter in 10X is easier than 2X. What's up, yes, Brandon? Yes, we have. Yep, so we finished the last chapter. Um, chapter six. I don't know. I was a little, I was a little neutral to it. Um, felt a little, felt a little bit like a, a sales letter, uh, more than a, a chapter for, for help. But there's a nice case study in there, uh, speaking about the, the gentleman that, uh, had to get actually get out of his agency for his agency to thrive, um, and and kind of culminating the whole who, not how. But there's definitely a pitch at the end. Don't want to ruin it for you, but it was okay. It was okay. It did, it did leave a little bit to, to be desired for my own my own self and, and reading it. There's a bonus in the back of the book. And did you did you see this bonus back here? No, I did not see the bonus. Listen to the audio version of this book for free. And there's a QR code right there to listen to the to the uh, and it gives you instructions for an app to download. And uh, yeah. So if you don't have this book, you definitely want to grab it and you can actually listen and download. I'm always finding the the little Easter eggs in the books, the little free courses, the little free downloads and just going there and making sure that I'm getting access to everything. You didn't even see that, did you? I didn't go to the last page, but that's cool. You get 500 inspiring life changing audio books and meditations. Yes. And and a ton of other audio to keep your mind right throughout the day. Yeah, it's very nice to talk to Ben Hardy. Yeah. All right, yeah. I take it. I take it all back. I like it better now. <laughs> so let's 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 talk about uh, let's talk about what this chapter was really about, and just give our uh, thoughts about it. Um, and this last chapter, it was titled "From Trans." What was it from? Uh, building a self-managing company. And, and in this chapter, he, he talked about, what was it? Going from evolving from a micromanager to a transformational leader, from a manager to a leader. And what, what is it that takes a managed person from being a manager to a leader? 
And there was one thing that he said in this in this chapter that really resonated with me about what makes a difference between a manager and a leader. And he said, this is what he said. He said, a manager has the ability to transform those around him, uh, around them, and, and they transform them in such a way that makes them want to perform better. And then and, and get that key point there, Brandon, not because they have to, but because they want to. They want to. They want to be inspired to do great. And that's where you're, and this is, and I'm thinking of this as the, the final, the final climax of the action that you take to become 10X or to 10X being, uh, you know, easier than 2X. And it just kind of wraps everything in a, in a bow. And uh, one thing that he talked about, I'm going to, I'm going to put it up here. Let's, let's get into it. Let's get into it. What he says four levels of entrepreneurship that you need to go through to reach that 10 X transformation. So now right. he showed us what it is. He showed us the steps to get there. Now, how must we transform ourselves to get to that level? And, uh, and he, and he talked about the four levels to reach that. Um, this was, uh, this is where, you know, those stories came into play. Give me a second here. What's up? I see you watching out there. Thanks for watching live. Let us know where you're watching from down in the comments. We're talking about the four levels of entrepreneurship that you need to go through to reach that 10X transformation. Uh, this was the last chapter of the book by Dr. Benjamin Hardy and, and uh, Dan Sullivan. I need to make my... Uh, I need to be to exit exit edit that <laughs> i need to okay all right there i go i can watch myself there what's up i see you watching bobby what's up ernesto what's up thanks for hopping in on us live give us a little bit of love hit that like button hit that hit that heart button let us uh let us know you're out there watching we'll give you a shout out during uh next week's episode um so what are these four levels of entrepreneurship that you need to go through to reach that 10x transformation? Um, and and stick around to the end also because I did. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna give a few more tips that he he talks about in the books to answer some of those burning questions that you might have out there about about this. You know, especially about the who, not how. And um, we're gonna answer those burning questions okay um so just stick around to the end uh brandon you got an exciting podcast coming up here soon too don't you yeah yeah we're changing subjects here a little bit so yeah um i do first one booked for 2024 first interview i've been slack and i've not put out any individual ones i think since about mid-december so um just been kind of head down Work with the clients that I'm currently working with. Um, another launch coming up, and and again figuring out my um, my own stick and deal. Um, got a website project working on things like that. So uh, the the time has been not made a priority to make a podcast. So I'm not saying I don't have the time. It's just I've not made it a priority to to get one out there. But an opportunity came up uh, to uh, have an interview of somebody that I'm that I'm following and I've seen uh, speak live. On a subject that I'm looking to grow myself, so this is going to be a twofer. Uh, it's going to one help the people that uh, that listen uh, for this, you know, things that we talk about as far as building a business, uh, and uh, I'm going to help myself and the things that I need to do to get out of my own way, figure out who my who is, mm -hmm. and start and stop figuring out um, how. So we tie it into there into exactly back into the book. Yeah, exactly. Um, the exactly. four levels. Level one is figuring out who your who is. Well, here, let me, let, me put that up there. let me put that level one right there. Yeah, there you go. Just stop being the, the guy that has to do it all and figure out who the who is to take the things um, off your plate. Take 
take your 80%, right? Give it to somebody else and make it their 20, right? And that's how you build, start building your foundation and build your business. Yes, yes. I think in this, uh, you know, we talk about going uh, from 10x, well, 10x being easier than 2x. And it's, it's, he's really been beating down the whole who, not how. Uh, and we we started that from the beginning of the chapter. And it's like he beat down the the who, not how. And um, I'm going to answer the burning question because a lot of people want to know, um, how do you find your first who? You know, how do you how do you decide exactly what it is? How do you find that? How do you find your first who? And he answers that question in uh, in this chapter. And we're going to I'm going to tell you that. So make sure that you stick around to the end if you want to know how to find your first who and and what should you actually start to um, what should you actually take off your plate? What is it that you should take off of your plate if you're a young starting entrepreneur? What do you think is something that you can give up, Brandon? What's what's that what's that 20 that you can give up? No, I'm sorry. What's that? The what's 80, that? Yeah, that, that you can give up. I probably just need to outsource my sales. Um, you know, considering that I'm doing what I'm doing uh, during the day and selling durable graphics and um, you know overlays for commercial equipment, uh, that that time's allocated to selling that when I you know could or should be selling my agency services or the freelance services where I could just hire a VA to to do that kind of cold outreach and book evening appointments to people out west or um, or across the globe, maybe down in Sydney, Australia, where it's 12 o'clock the next day down there. Uh, <laughs> we, know it's, we know it's, we know it's, in, <laughs> it's over. And, and, side of the world. And, and close some deals, uh, close some deals that way. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that, that would definitely be my who, but it's the how to find the money to make it happen. You know what I mean? So it's ah, like put, ah. put the cart before the horse or the horse before the cart, chicken and the egg deal. I was like, you need money to hire the VA, but you don't have the money to hire the VA, so you got to do it yourself. So uh, you know, that's, that's where it's at. You you brought up a good point because um, you know this is not this is also another one of those burning questions. It's it's hard to say that I'm going to get somebody because I can't afford it because I don't have the money to. Well, right here. And uh, it, because he really beats it down. And I think he did a good job of kind of answering those questions that he knows people are going to have. And he calls it the who, not how, fact, frequently yeah. asked questions. And one of those questions is, what if you can't afford a who? What if you can't afford a who? You know, um, you can't. You know, I can't afford to 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 pay someone. Uh, and what does what does Dr. Benjamin Hardy say about that? And he says, as I'm going to read straight from uh, the passage here, he says, "You can't afford not to get hooked." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Typical salesman. That's a, that's, a, that's a that's a Grant Cardone close right there. You can't afford not to. I get it. Right. I totally understand it. And Agree one hundred percent. Get it? There, yeah. there, don't there don't see it ways. as a cost. Don't see it as yeah. a cost. Getting a who is an investment in yourself and your results. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, Grant Cardone Jr. right there with that <laughs> with that uh, piece of wisdom. No, and I, and I get it. And again, I agree uh, with it. Uh, the thing that I've been looking into is just finding the help that pays on performance to start off to where, you know, if they don't perform and there's no deals closed, then they don't get paid. You know what I mean? So just finding that hundred percent commission only person willing to do that type of work. Um, oh man. That, that's, that's, a good, that's tough. That's tough. You make a good point there. You make a good point I, because I have to tell an experience that I've had with some 
uh, some who's. I've, and it's interesting because, okay, as I've gone along in the entrepreneurial journey, and uh, and I see, I see exactly what he's saying because I have had several who's. I've had several who's that I have, uh, you know, kind of delegated out some tasks. And I think for a while I, I said to myself, it was tough for me because it was tough for me to actually give up control. Um, and because I always felt as though someone else just won't, uh, don't they won't care for it as much as I do, or they won't go after it as much as I would, or they won't put as much effort into it that I would. So giving over control of a part of my business to someone else felt uh, it was really tough for me, but I really wanted to get over that hump. So I have had some who's. And one of the things that I did learn from probably a most recent who, um, you know, delegating one of those tasks that I think that I could better give to someone else that's more an expertise in that. It was that same thing. It was that pay for performance. It's that pay for performance and not just paying them without getting it in return because you give them the money and then, okay, you know, where's, where's what I asked you to do. Um, mm -hmm. and, and you want to be paid every month, but I haven't gotten half of what I paid you for already. Um, so that is a learning experience. And, and one of the things that I love what he talked about in this book, what I got from him too, because he answered the question, how do you find, how do you find the right who's? <clears throat> Let me just put that up here. Yeah, put that up there. And then I got to add on to that. I'm going to change, uh, change costumes here. So there's a guy that um, has this company here. And if you re if read the book, was it offers? $100 million offers. Um, that's one of the main offers that he actually put up there and did a demonstration on is the whole pay for performance deal. Because everybody, anybody and everybody can collect money and say they're going to run your ads, right? But it's that person that's able to put their money where their mouth is and do something for absolutely nothing to then get paid after the fact is really where it um, where it can one make you a ton of money, and two, you know, for those that again can't afford up front um, to really be able to grow and expand the business in that way. So, okay, yeah. enough of that. Back back to the regularly scheduled content. <laughs> that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough. And I think it's tough because people don't want to pay for something if it's not people will put money into something that's going to bring them money back. And if yeah. you and and I know we know that ads can be ads can be tough. You know, running ads can be either a it can either be a a, a treasure trove or it could be a a bottomless pit <laughs> throwing your money after some advertisements and if they don't work um yeah you know you just don't see the results so how do you find the right who's how do you find them where do you find them at and and what he says in this chapter about finding the right who's is it's a continuous process that you'll progressively get better at with time. It's like any other skill. In the beginning, you won't be that great at it and you won't have the best clarity and filters you use to find highly specific clues. So it's not a linear progression of boom, I'm going to have the right who's. And, and it, this one spoke to me because I said, oh my gosh, that has been my experience. I've, I've, uh, I've gone through a few who's and I'm still along that journey. Um, I'm still along that journey um, because we're just talking about level one to level two, going from rugged individual to leader applying the who, not how. Then there is this second level of uh, entrepreneurship that you're supposed to go through to get to this uh, 10x transformation. And that's from leader applying the who, not how to self-managing company. What 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 can you say about that? 
I'm saying do it. That's what I'm saying, really. Um, there's, there's a lot there to really unpack for what you said. Um, while you're looking at that, I was trying to remember a resource that, um, that I had in front of me on, on what you're talking about as far as finding the people. There's tons of resources out there. And I know we just mentioned virtual assistants and where you can hire them from. Um, there is a gentleman by the name of Dennis Yu. Um, if, you, if you're not following him, when it comes to all things marketing, definitely follow him. Uh, his deal blitz metrics is is off the chain for this particular topic of finding your who. Um, mm-hmm. He does digital marketing and he worked for Yahoo and all that kind of stuff. But I, I remember him kind of promoting um, Philippines VAs first. And he actually has a whole course on how to actually hire a, um, hire a VA. Uh, I don't know what it is off the top of the head. You're going to have to Google it and look it up. It's not a paper motion for, for what it is. I just know it's stout for I went through it myself. Um, and then he's now moving into the Afghanistan area and, um, educating people there to become VAs and to make money online. So there's, he's slowly building out the, that whole Asia market for, for VAs, but that is probably going to be the best place to go starting out, especially if your budget's low. Um, but that's not to say there aren't, uh, VAs here stateside that would be able to do, uh, the work for you probably pay a couple dollars more per hour to do it, but places like onlinejobs.ph is a good place to, to start to find that who. I, I, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> I hear what you're saying. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to um, slightly disagree. Um, it's, it's not easy. I don't think it's easy finding just the right person, in my opinion. Um, maybe there's some uh, some additional tips. Uh, and I, and I, th- I, I saw some tips recently on a post I saw on social media, and it was about um, someone was using uh, Indeed to try to uh, hire people. Um, you, prob- you probably know the guy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention his name. Uh, his name is Ken Okazaki. You know Ken? Mm, no. Uh, he's a video. Uh, he's a video guy. He developed this. Uh, he developed this. Uh, this portable video kit. Uh, and this portable video kit, you just take it anywhere, and then it. You've got all your cameras and everything needed. It was interesting because uh, I know James Beard had one when we were at Funnel Hacking Live. And they were using it as we were uh, recording my BSL live from Funnel Hacking Live. But um, he and he's also done a lot of the video work for Ping June. Um, okay. So he's look, he's looking for uh, he's looking for uh, to hire someone, and he had an a, uh, application on Indeed. And he said something interesting. He said that he said that he had over two hundred applicants. And less than 2% were actually showing up to the interviews, less than 2%. And he and he was asking, he's like, is this not natural? Is this something wrong? And just looking at the comments from people about how this is really the norm, you have to sift through a ton of people to find the right person. But there were some tips and and it's funny because I've heard the tip before, and the tip was give them give them a task to do, give them a task to do before setting up the interview because it lets you know that they're more serious about doing it and they are uh, and they can follow instructions. So mm-hmm. that that was pretty interesting that I found out there. <clears throat> Uh, about trying to hire when you, you know, uh, you know, I personally, I personally like to hire from someone in my circle. Um, Just someone that has, you know, I know we, I know we all get these, uh, I can probably find four unanswered DMs from people trying to reach out to me already, but I, I, I kind of, you know, I've kind of like it because, you know, it, they're, they're out there hustling. 
They're out there mm -hmm. hustling and they're out there getting the initiative. And sometimes if, if <clears throat> it, you know, if someone that has that drive and has that, uh, that just, I'm going to get, I want to get to Mark, you know, I saw you, I had someone tell me, uh, <laughs> you know what I had someone tell me? I was like, wow, that's a good line. They told me this, Brandon. They said, I've admired your prowess online for a while. Losing <laughs> <laughs> you like, up. Buttering you, you up. So they're buttering you up. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's a good line. That's a good line. <laughs> and, and it was interesting. So maybe you might, if you're a VA out there listening and you're trying to reach out to people cold, um, here's what they did. They, uh, they, I could tell because, you know, I saw like so-and-so like this video, so-and-so commented on this video. They like this video. So they kind of just go down your profile. They go down and they like it or they comment. And so, so your, their name is kind of in your mind, you mm -hmm. know, so, so you've seen their name. So when they reach out to you in the DM, it's not a surprise. And then they came with that one liner. I've admired your prowess on your business acumen online for a while. And I just said, hmm, you are very observant. <laughs> for William watching on YouTube, um, not sure what link you're referring to, but the one that I mentioned for finding a VA is onlinejobs.ph. Uh, is that? Ah, that's uh, that's William. That's our uh, what's up, William? William Gibson. Uh, let me make sure. I'm gonna throw the link out here for you, okay, William? Uh, I don't know if it's gonna go to YouTube, but you can actually. Oh, well, you know what? Let me post it across the screen here for you, okay, William? Hey, uh, yeah, hey, that's right. William was our uh contributor over on YouTube and we're going to contact you and we're going to send you uh, a little prize pack, William. We appreciate your uh, engagement for us. We appreciate that. Remember, Brandon, when uh, I keep yep. telling you uh, over on YouTube? Yeah. Uh, somehow we haven't been seeing your comments, but um, definitely let me let me put this out there for you. This will be the link right there there and uh yep that's it right there you see it scrolling down on the bottom of the screen william that's it go right there get signed up registered and then you'll be able to get your own free funnel hacker t-shirt and then we want to see you wearing it we want to see you wearing it okay cool all right all right got off track there right right <laughs> a little bit all right okay so we were talking level two to level three from leader applying who, not how to self-managing company. So then there is that last step of uh, going from level three to level four. And level three to level four is from self-managing company to self-expanding company. This is, this is, uh, yeah, I, I you know, I can't say that I've been at this level of uh, entrepreneurship at this time. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Nope. It, it, that takes a while. Um, that's that's having done, you know, levels one and two very well to, to put the right who's in place that are ready to take charge and actually know what they're doing and, and managing a team. Most entrepreneurs are not team managers. I mean, if you look at, um, if you look at click funnels, um Russell Brunson, he doesn't he doesn't do anything but make the videos. You know what I mean? So and he even said it in the videos itself. Like when he was in charge of people, everything went to hell in a handbasket. And it wasn't until he found that right who, um, you know, the person that actually builds out the the software itself, and then Dave, who you know was the, the COO. Uh, to run and manage everything, did things really start to, to kind of come together and the ClickFunnels grew? So if, if you keep your ear to the ground and watch these um, SaaS companies and these other smaller 
uh, companies start from nothing and then grow up, look at the the people that they have in place around them to, to help them out. Yes, yes, yes. That that leads us to one of the most asked questions when it comes to um, going from a, a young entrepreneur trying to go 10x. And that is, who is the first who that young entrepreneurs should get? Who is the first who that young entrepreneurs should get? Why? What should I get? Should you get a salesperson? That should be the first person you get. Here, here's here's what uh, here's what Dan Hardy says. Whatever he says is wrong. No. <laughs> <laughs> I do agree. You need to be organized and have a system. Yes, but you got to get sales because businesses fail because they don't make enough sales in in enough quantity and fast enough times. So. I think this you should is, have your system process down, but then after that, you got to get a salesperson. This is this is what he says about getting a who that organizes and systematizes you, so you can stop having to continually organize yourself. The more <clears throat> the more dedicated you are to your creativity and craft, the less bandwidth and cognitive load you'll be able to give to procedural and organizational tasks. Uh, and he says that, remember, Frank Sinatra didn't move his own pianos and neither <laughs> should you. <laughs> he played the piano, but he didn't move his own pianos. So that's that's the suggestion. Um, it, you know, should you get a salesperson? Should you get a salesperson? Yes. What, I mean, should you get a salesperson to, uh, you know, if you got a salesperson, they're out there getting those sales, they're bringing them in. Then you got fulfillment, <laughs> you know, then you got, well, yeah, you, gotta, you, you gotta have those things set up first, right? You should be like, if you're the one starting everything off, you're wearing all the multiple hats. You should know that what systems and processes need to be in place and fulfillment is key in one of them. So you should always have your fulfillment partners in your back pocket ready to rock and roll, whether it's a white label service, um, you know, there that you, that you move them off to, um, that you're paying for anyway, right. Cause you're paying for that white label service. Um, it's just that you've already sold that deal up front and you're collecting the difference. You're moving them off to the white label to get fulfilled. Having that salesperson in there is just going to amplify that. And then if you really need to get that organization down pack, once you get more than two or three people in there, then yeah, hire the person to organize everything and keep the books together and, and all that kind of stuff. But if you can use software and you know how to set it up, great. If not, hire the person to set it up and then rock and roll. I wouldn't put anybody on the payroll just starting out. That isn't uh, an income producing asset. Uh, integrator. Um, he, he mentions integrator in this uh, chapter. Um, and that's what Russell Brunson talks about a lot especially the combination that Russell and Todd have, you know, mm -hmm. Russell being the, the attractive character and then Todd just being in the background, getting his hands dirty, being that integrator. Um, Oper the operator. Yeah. 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 I had, uh, I had a goal of having an integrator recently that, that woo, boom, <laughs> Remember, I told you, well, I told mm -hmm. you, maybe you don't know, but I told you that they turned out to be a crackpot. You mentioned something. I didn't realize what the context was and where you met the person, if I even knew them. But yeah, so I remember the message. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have to remind you of what uh, what that was exactly. So that's the first who that you should get but brandon disagrees he doesn't agree that you should get some well you should get systemized but it should be a salesperson and now we want to answer okay so i think we already answered this question how do you find the right who's and what he suggests is start right where you are in your current network start right where you are in your current network Look for those. Uh, he he talks about how he started off 
in a Facebook group asking questions. And uh, I saw you ask a question in a Facebook group recently as well, Brandon. Do you uh, I, I ask a ton of questions in a lot of Facebook groups about uh, about uh, those uh, those signs? What did you think about the answers you got for? Uh, oh, uh, they were OK. I'm kind of what I expected. Um, it's, it's a tough business and it's a commodity for, for what it is. And, you know, taking a second deep dive into it, uh, I would say 70 percent of them were right. Um, 30 percent were just kind of going off the cuff. Um, I actually had a, a talk with the, the boss about it today um, and where the um, the lack is and one's the number of SKUs and two is um, the uh, the lack of traffic. So fix those two things, get more things on there, uh, revamp the business model to a print on demand deal and um, you know, have better offers. It should, should improve it. Awesome. 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 Key takeaways from the book. 10 X is easier than two X. If you don't have your copy, go get it. And uh, make sure to check the back of the book because Brandon doesn't read that far because you can no. get, <laughs> you can scan the QR code. So here we are at the end. We we're going over time. Hey, here, we'll, here, we'll do this for you. If you pause this at the right time, right now, if you're no, no, enough, no, 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 they need to get the book. Mark, hey, blame Mark. Yell at Mark. Yeah, you need to. They need to get the book. <laughs> they need to get the book, or, or engage. Because we still, I mean, we still got some copies to give away. So if you want to win your own copy, you need to start hitting up Brandon. He's got a few extra copies. <laughs> yeah, send me a DM. I got, I got a couple. Right, right. I'll give, I'll give, I'll give away. Five, the first five people that send me a message. Oh, five. Wow. That's a lot. Uh, All right. I'm going to be messaging you five times. You got <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Hey, I wanted to, uh, you know, just say thanks so much out there for watching this episode of Pitch Practice, the show, as we come to an end. How about we just do... Um, one week of the entrepreneurial personality type. You got that book, right? Mm -hmm. I, I I gave you the link to download it by Alex Charfin. Yeah, I have it. I haven't even looked at it or opened it up. Um, yeah, I guess I'll read that one. And that's uh, and then we we need another we need another hard what? copy book. Uh, actually, you know what might be a better book? Because um, you should have this book. Not many other people will, though. Because so I can, am in the, him. I am in the middle of another. Oh, this book. Oh, oh! I started reading that too, man. I started reading that. I do have it. I do have and, it. And there's only one way to get it. Yeah. And we'll put the link in our respective video comments if you want to follow along. We will do this book. It's a short book. Yeah. We'll only do, yeah. One, uh, we'll only do one episode on it. And it's yeah. from Hill's Golden Rule. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I dug into that book a little bit. And it's, it's amazing how much you can really glean from that book um and that book is some years old too let's do it that's it that's the next read but all right hey link, link will be in the comments to get your own copy absolutely and we just want to spread the love here at pitch practice to all those watching on facebook all those watching on the youtube all those watching on the LinkedIn, as well as Twitter and all over the social stratosphere. Thanks for tuning in. 
I'm Mark, the mental marketer, and he I'm is. <laughs> I'm here. I'm out. It's, dude, it's nine o'clock at night. You see these in the morning. Oh, I'm ready to go, go to bed. Go. I'm ready there. to go to bed. Brandon here with BKXX Enterprises, getting you found today. <laughs> there you go. Always complaining about the time. <laughs> Stay warm. We had a cold. We had a we had it, it was so cold this week. I woke up yesterday to uh frozen pipes. I don't want to hear it. It's it's one degrees outside every morning here. So I don't want to hear your cold down there at 30 degrees. <laughs> it was not, it was 18. 18, uh, Brandon. <laughs> what's what's the difference? <laughs> What's the difference between 18 degrees there is it. and two degrees? It's like it's, it. it's, it's, cold. it's all cold. <laughs> it's all cold, man. It sucks. It's all cold. I don't think I can tell oh a uh, difference between 18 and minus 18 is just cold. It's cold. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, we hope you're staying warm out there wherever you are. Thanks for tuning in. Sit from uh See you next week. See you next week. Same bad right. time, same bad channel. All right. Take care.